I've got something new. And the only reason why I bought it was one small detail I saw on an image on the internet. So, before we get to that detail, let's talk about what we have here today. This is the Intertech X3601 Impulse Micro, a small form factor gaming PC case. Now, ignoring the fact that the whole industry is just exploiting the word gaming, let's go over the features. We've got up to mini IDX motherboard size, one 3.5 inch hard drive, two 2.5 inch hard drives, one USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0, as well as a dedicated LED button and a separate power supply tunnel with dust filter. On the fan side, we have support for one 120 fan in the back, two 120s or two 140s in the top with a dust filter and support for a radiator up to 280 millimeters, and another pair of 120s or 140s with radiator in the front. Now the really important stuff. Two RGB strips in the front going from top to bottom and a tempered glass side panel. Now what positive little details does this case has to offer? One little addition that you will get out of the box is this little fan and RGB hub. Here. And despite it being meant to connect the two LED strips in the front, you can connect four additional 3-pin RGB devices and four 3-pin or four 4-pin fans. Now the whole thing is powered by a SATA port and can be hooked up to the button in the front of the case or to your main board and then be addressed by any of the usual RGB softwares. Okay, having that nice little addition out of the way, let's talk about why I bought this. So the last time I've installed a hard drive into any of my builds is a long time ago. I do list the amount of hard drive spaces in a case as a feature, but for myself, they, they are just annoying. Nowadays with PSU tunnels, the hard drives are usually placed behind the PSU, making it sometimes really really hard to route your cables around it. Now what this thing has, which may not be exclusive, but I haven't seen it before, is that the hard drive cage can be unhooked and then just removed creating a whack ton of space for all of your cables. I may get bashed in the comments for not knowing that this exists, but I'm shocked that this is not yet standardized. Anyway, another small detail that I've liked is the mounting mechanism of the side panels. Instead of a... Instead of a frame around the glass and the frame being hooked to the bottom and the top of the case, the X3601 offers a slightly different approach, where we only have the glass and those two small little pieces here, which slide very smoothly into the front of the case, and everything is secured tightly with, with two screws in the back, which makes this a thing of the past. Okay, so with everything covered, I think it is time to put something in here and see if this can keep up with my... From now on, not having a removable hard drive cage will be counted as a downside. No, honestly, I love the fact that it wasn't there. But this already brings me to the first point, cable management. Even though this is a small form factor cage, cable management was not an issue here. The holes around the main board were perfectly set up, there was more than enough space behind the power supply once I removed the cage, and the space between the back plate and the side panel was pretty big for such a small case. One thing that stood out though was the mounting mechanism of the side panel. There was no fumbling around, no unnecessary pressure, it just slid in. On other points, working with the RGB was fine, using the included fan hub or RGB hub was also quite convenient. So all in all, building in this was a positive experience. On the design side, it's pretty okay. The RGBs are making it modern while it's still a modest design, so all in all it looks like an overpowered office PC, but that's always debatable. So coming to the things that could have been better. The obvious thing would be the I.O. Only one USB 3.0 just won't cut it nowadays, so that's definitely upgradable. Behind the front panel we have the possibility to attach two 120 fans. But if we take those Noctuas here and align them, 
we can already see that we can theoretically use three of them. Of course, this may create a problem with the cables of the I.O., but I think if the PCB that connects all these cables gets slightly changed, like for example all the contacts are in a 90 degree angle, this should create the clearance to make this a 3-120 fan front. The feet, even though they are quite big and not too short, could have been black. I think it would have been better if all of the case was black, but that's just my personal opinion. And there is one last thing I want to mention, but it is not necessarily a negative. If we look very closely into the grill on the front panel, we can see that there is a, some sort of a foam inside. Basically, wait. Basically, it should be some sort of dust filter or sound damper material, probably a bit like those sound isolators here, but a lot thinner. Now my possible issue with this is that this may also be a huge restriction to the airflow. So I would really like to rip these filters out and see if the airflow gets any better. Because even though I have Noctuas in here, the airflow just seems to be a little restricted. But I will delegate this issue into an individual video, so stay tuned and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to know when you're done. Anyway, back to the cage. Anyway, back to the case. All in all, it's alright. Features are okay, mounting mechanism is great, removable hard drive cage is even better, and the price is more than alright with around 40 to 45 euros. So I think I've said everything there is about this case, so for today it's time to wrap this up. But maybe you could consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified when we are done with the next video. And maybe you can also leave your opinion with a thumb up or thumb down or even a comment. We hope to see you on the next one, but until then, have a look at one of these totally random videos. See ya!